Hey, this is David the Shepherd School, and I want to take a kind of a quick video, a quick second, and talk about some science and specifically what radiation actually is. Okay, now I'm not going to uh, get into to great detail, but I'm just going to tell you enough so that you can uh, kind of understand what people are talking about if this is a threat or a hazard in your area and you want to. Uh, to deal with a little bit, okay? I'm not going to get into the deep science. So if you're a health physicist or a, a, a nuclear engineer, you know, feel free to comment. But but uh, remember, we're we're not discussing how to have surgery. We're talking about how to bandage a wound. You know, um, the information is good, but we're not going to get into the weeds with it. So basically, as a, a, a citizen, there's only a couple things that you need to know. And the first one is. Radiation is a chemical property of the material that you're dealing with, okay? It's just like something being hot or something being liquid or uh, uh, something being a gas. It's, it's a chemical property of what you're dealing with. And basically, uh, everything wants to be in stasis. Everything wants to be balanced, okay? And if an atom is not balanced, it wants to get balanced. If you've ever had two magnets and you've got the plus side and the negative side, right? They want to stick together because the negative side is pulling, it needs something, and the positive side is pushing and wants to give something. So the, the, the push and the pull, they come together and then they complete, okay? Well, if you have two pluses and they're both pushing, they're going to push away, okay? Because they're repelling each other. Well, if you have an atom that has, you know, extra energy in it, it's going to want to give that energy off so it can be back to normal. Okay, and that process of giving off that energy is called radioactivity. And there's different types of radioactivity. Okay, and we name them just so it's easier to see what they are. And there's several different types, but we're going to talk about the three ones that you're going to see uh, alpha, beta, and gamma. There's also a neutron, but you won't see neutron unless you're in a reactor or you know next to plutonium you know a, a nuclear detonation so if you have if you're in any of those places yeah you don't have to worry about it anyway okay so let's talk about alpha beta gamma we'll start with alpha and alpha is basically a particle okay the the element is giving off a particle and basically it's a helium atom it's it's the largest of all the different types of radiation, it's uh, basically a helium atom without electrons. And it's pretty big as far as uh, atoms go, right? And so it comes out, it's got a lot of energy, but it's heavy, so it can't go very far. And if you think of it to scale, say you have a slingshot, and you put a bowling ball in the slingshot, and you go to shoot it, how far is that slingshot going to throw that bowling ball, it's not going to go very far, right? And so in um, radioactive terms, alpha is only going to be able to travel an inch or two from its source. So if I have, uh, say, americium, which is a, a radioactive element that gives off alpha uh, particles, it's only going to move about, a, about an inch or so away, okay? Now, um, also, because it's big, it, it's easily shielded. It's easy to uh, stop it, okay? So if I have my slingshot with my big um, bowling ball and I shoot it at a volleyball net, there's lots of big holes in that volleyball net, but, those, but it's easy to stop that big particle. And, and because of that, the dead layer of skin on your hand or a sheet of paper or a piece of cloth is enough to stop one of those heavy... Uh, alpha particles. So if you get exposed to alpha radiation, it can't do you any damage outside of your body because it can't get through, you know, the dead skin cells or your clothes, okay? Now, alpha is dangerous. If you remember that Russian spy, that KGB guy, Polinko, that was poisoned with uh, a radioactive isotope a couple years ago in England, he was poisoned with an alpha emitter, a, a, a chemical that gave off alpha radiation. And when he took that inside his body, 
because it was so close to his sails, it gave off all that energy in a very small area and was very dangerous to that one small area. So, you know, if you're two foot away from me and I shoot the, the bowling ball at you with a slingshot, it's not gonna it's not gonna get far enough to, to hurt you, right? But if you're standing right in front of me and that bowling ball comes at the slingshot land and falls and lands on your toe, it's gonna do you damage. And that's kind of what we're talking about with Alpha. The next kind of radiation is um, beta, okay? And beta is also a particle, but it's a smaller particle. It's, it's basically an electron that's being shot out, you know, of the outer rings of an of a element. And so if you've got that same slingshot, and instead of a bowling ball, you put a, a ball bearing in it, and you shoot it, right? It's going to go a lot faster, and it's going to go a lot further. So in, in real life, a beta particle can go about a meter, a yard, about three feet or so, okay? And it can also go through your skin. And it can go through a piece of cloth, okay? Um, you can get what's called beta burns, where it enters your, your skin, but it can't go that far. You know, the, the ball bearing's not going to enter your body, but it will give you a bruise, right? And so what, it, what it'll do is it'll get in your skin and give you a really bad sunburn. It'll look like a really bad sunburn, and that's called a beta burn, okay? But it's not going to, uh, to get inside your, your body and do you a lot of damage because it can't go very far. Plastic. A piece of plastic can stop beta, water can stop beta, um, and so, you know, it's not going to do you a whole lot of damage, but it, but it can um, uh, damage some of your outer cells in your skin. And the third kind is gamma, and gamma is not a particle at all. It's kind of like a beam of light, okay? And so if you shoot a laser at your um, volleyball net, it's just going to go right through the holes, okay? And so, you know, unless it hits one of the actual net, you know, the wires in the net. And so beta, because it's so small, it's going so fast, it could go through a lot of stuff. It could go right through your hand, you know, gamma can, because it's not hitting, you know, it's going in between the, the, the electrons and stuff inside the cells. It's actually going straight through your body without hitting stuff. But if it does hit something, it can do a lot of damage. It can ionize which means it can, it can um, change the structure of a cell. And so, you know, gamma can go, you know, 100 feet. You know, it can go 200 feet. Gamma can go a lot farther, and it can go through a lot of stuff. Gamma needs to be shielded with stuff like lead or lots of concrete or lots of water, and it can go right through you. And so because of that, you really can't wear, you know, a gamma suit, you know, a big lead suit, anything heavy enough to stop gamma. It'd be too heavy for you to wear. Right. So, how can you protect yourself from radiation? It's pretty simple. Uh, something that, that came out of hazardous materials handling, called time, distance, and shielding. Okay, and this works for for you know acid spills, fires, X Y S, bill collectors, radiation. Right. If something is a danger to you, don't be around it any longer than you've got to. And there's the time. Right. Don't go sit next to the nuclear bomb and kind of hug, hug it. If you got to go get it, go get it, go touch it and run off, right? Uh, that's why during the Fukushima disaster, these guys would run in, they'd do their business, they'd come out, and then they'd send another group in to do something and come out. You know, maybe get one shovel and throw on something, right? The next thing is distance. Farther away you can get, the better. They have what they call the inverse square law, meaning every time that you double the distance away, you decrease its, its strength by a factor of four. So... You know, if I was a foot away from a source, and then I go two foot away from a source, the, the intensity is going to uh, decrease by a factor of four because I doubled that. Okay, so uh, as far away as possible. The third thing is shielding. There's much stuff between you and the threat as possible. And that's the whole idea with, uh, you know, with shelter in place. If you look at some of these old FEMA civil defense era stuff, and they talk about getting in your um, bathtub, it's so you've got more stuff between you and whatever's being released. So time, distance, and shielding. I just want to tell you, and this is a common thread throughout all of my stuff, you don't need to be scared of these things. You do need to respect it, and you do need to know about it. So if you live in an area where you think this is a problem, you know, learn about it, find ways to mitigate the problem, and then, you know, go on with your life, okay? Uh, 
you don't need to uh, to panic about this stuff, right? Because if it's enough to do you to to kill you quickly, you know you're dead, right? Um, but radiation's all around us. It's in your walls. It's in your uh, uh, bananas that you eat. You know, a little bit's not going to do anything to you. So uh, anyway, I know that was kind of uh, uh, ranty and, and fast and down and dirty, uh, but if you're interested in this stuff, you know, there's plenty of resources and you can always go online uh, to visit us at www.tngun.com. I've got a plan, fits my point.